previously on The Devil on G-String. Why did you start skating? Now that's a little too laid back. Was that your only reason? There's nothing wrong with people wanting to hear some great story about your introduction to skating. If you had to give a reason... Ah. Foreigners and Japanese have radically different physiques, after all. And why did you have to be the world's best? So it's all thanks to Ikiko-san's brilliant education. You found him? The call was from Haribi. Apparently, Yori reported to Gonzo. Hey, Already? I really have to hand it to these guys. I should have known their senses would be exceptionally sharp among the, these familiar streets. But even though you got his address, you still didn't catch him. Horibi continued as if ashamed. I show up a little after six. Horibi got here a bit earlier. We saw me stared at the dirty piece of paper. What the fuck? Someone left him a note? Usami nodded. That's right. If Saiju had left at 4.30 as I had guessed, then the note would be in the mailbox, not in the garbage. The cab was bait. He only called it. He never got in. いえ、乗車して少しの距離を走ったところで降りたのでしょう。そうしないとタクシー会社の人もアザイさんに何か言うはずです。連中の嗅覚は生半可なものではない。ヤクザどもはすでに私のアパートを探し出しているだろう。That
コーチの周りにパパの部下みたいな人がいるのもおかしいぞ。うん、そうそう。I knew she'd notice. コーチ、守られてるみたいだったよ。トイレの前までついてくるんだもん。I don't think a lie would work here. なんでコーチが守られてるのかなヒルトン先生とか大会の偉い人とかならわかるけど。うん。兄さんどう思う I don't know. Stop talking and go take your bath. さては兄さんもグルだな。のんちゃんを驚かせようったってそうはいかないぞ。Don't worry about it. Didn't you say you had no interest in anything besides skating? Ah, so that. Nisa, you know, 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 あなたはもう終わりです。You're the one about to die. Sajo took another look down the road. The meddling housewives were nowhere to be seen. どうか今のうちに自首してください。警察に逃げ込むのがあなたが唯一助かる道です。そんな話をしに一人でのこのこ現れたのか。言っておきますが、私を捕まえようとしても無駄です。誰にも話したことはありませんが、格闘には自信があります。サイジョは驚愕。彼の行動は見えたことから始まり、世界を囲んでいる。大声が変わったのはサイジョの耳に響いたことから始まり、トーン、ムニーチャン。彼は自分を自分の力を与えた。Exhausted. The fists of the men around him greeted his face repeatedly. It was a tragic scene. He could only withstand the shower of blows, blows so tenaciously brutal that it was hard to even imagine their, their deliverers as human. I'm scared. Don't kill me. Voice echoed in his ears. Don't kill me, Unichan. His sister's nostalgic voice was suddenly cut off. And so it continues. Greetings! My name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play The Devil on G String. So, who saw me? I need to give you I need to give you a treat, cause you done a good job. Or at least I would, if Kyosuke wasn't such a goddamn cheapskate. Oh wait, I forgot to read that. Usami came to my house again late last night. He's sitting in hell right now. So, dead? He's probably been put, brought to the underground chamber in that building on Central Boulevard for torturing. Can it wait until tomorrow? He's prey it took some considerable effort to catch. I'm sure Haribi's having a field day. Sami furrowed her brows. You know, that text message you sent me made me really nervous. No subject, just the word health and the hospital's name. I think you meant help. But it was from an unknown address. How did you know my number anyway? Did you have it registered? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How disgusting. Yeah. I think she might, know, she might have noticed our mess, but she seems to be trying hard not to worry about it. Huh? アザイさんは1月1日とかお暇ですか Go out on a limb with what? お暇ですか It's like she's really not giving me a choice here. January 1st. 
That's New Year's Day. I'm the son of a Yakuza boss, you know. I can't skip the New Year's events. I don't know. That morning, maybe? If we went to the shrine around 4 or 5, it might work out. Wait, 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 wait. What's decided? Oh, for... Just get out of here. So exhausting to speak to bizarre people like her. Didn't I just put myself on the path to getting onto a route with Usami by accident or something? That was a cute little walking bounce. Usami slowly stepped to the door. She turned back and gave me a look, her long hair swinging happily. <sighs> Usami left in a satisfied, in satisfied, relieved spirits. What's with that girl? What if... A horrible thought came to my mind. What if she really does have feelings for me? No. Not a chance. And why not? I shook the hidden image out of my head. It's all that pestering she does of me that's got me thinking such things. There's no reason for somebody to like me in the first place. Unless she knows you well enough to have uh, liked you before meeting with you towards the beginning of this whole story. Like what I think I remember you hinting towards? Cut the crap, Rain. It's time to work. Soon enough, Kanan returned. <sighs> Hello, Kanan. Hey, I poured you a bath. She hugged me tightly all of a sudden. It was because Usami had got me thinking weird things. But for the first time in my life, I was conscious of a certain fact. The fact that Kanan was a girl. Yes, astute observation, genius. In other news, water is wet. Luckily, my mind calmed down right away. What am I thinking? What are you thinking? As long as I'm following Gonzo, I'll never reach happiness. Then maybe you should stop following him, maybe? Because I'll never be able to be by my mother's side, as I have always wished to. Only because you keep telling yourself that. And hello to you too, devil man. The next morning, a man identifying himself as Mawu, me of course, arrived at the headquarters of the Sano Corporation. Mata, figure skate no taikai ga hajimatta wake da ga. You're interested in my progress. Kanbashiku nai you da ne. I'm sowing my seeds right now. Zehi. All I need is time. Don't worry about it. Things are falling into place as we speak. Good lord, this man fusses over the most asinine things. Even so, Maya's horrid complexion betrayed his worrisome nature. What about them? Maybe I am. Shinye 
Are you implying that I'm orchestrating the conflict between the two groups? Look, Mr. Someya, this has nothing to do with you. Apparently he's worried I'll betray him. I'm not an employee of this company. It's only natural for him to suspect that I would gladly sacrifice the company when the time came. I do not intend to bring any trouble down on the, upon this company. My words bore a calmness to veil their threatening edge. After all, Sano Corporation is my father's company. Somea looked shocked initially, but he quickly fathomed my statement and smiled. They say faith is power, Mr. Somea. However, the application of faith demands abandoning one's own thoughts and ideas. After seeing that there was nothing more for me to do, I'd bid farewell to Somea. Now then, Saijo hasn't contacted me in a while. I probably have his Sami to thank for this. My only concern is how much Saijo will reveal. I've taken precautionary steps after all. I don't think he'll give up the plot too easily. It's hard to say for certain. Will he talk? Well, before tomorrow. Oh well. All I can do right now is prepare for the big event. As the time neared noon, Gonzo called for me. Usami was also there. Gonzo shifted his posture and stood up. You don't look like you're in a very good day today, Daddy. Um... Could I get you some coffee? I'm sorry. I haven't been feeling very well recently. He's not a man that accepts excuses. The line wouldn't have gotten me anywhere. However, Gonzo seemed to have something more important than my education to talk about today. Saijo didn't talk. But wasn't Haribi left in charge of the interrogation? Haribi is the single most sadistic being I know of in this world. Water, fire, whips, beasts. He'll use any technique ever conceived until the prisoner forgets he's even human. Well, I'll, well, at least I'll give the guy credit for one thing, if he's even willing to use beasts. It's more than what most, most of the sadistic tortures would use. Of course, that's probably why Gonzo leaves such things to him. So he sworn loyalty to Mao. My question simply disappointed Gonzo. Right. Things like loyalty have no meaning in the face of violence and death. At that, the sign of Usami opened her mouth. Gonzo nodded. A healthy person in his situation might, might have even been drawn to suicide. That's beyond depraved. 
The scenario has already escaped the limits of my comprehension. Ano, jibun ni makase te itadake masen de shouka? Interrogation. You. That's a terrible idea. And why is that? A man who hasn't budged after horrific torture won't reveal information to a person like you sought me. Well, in that point, you got nothing else to lose, so where's the harm? Not to mention that Usami's the person who landed him in this mess. Well, if anything, I would argue that might actually be beneficial because I'm sure that because I'm sure that、uh, he would get more emotional being interrogated by the person who helped put land him in this situation to begin with, and if you get him emotional enough, he might give a slip of the tongue to something important. Come on, man, think this through. If anything, she'll be the one person he won't confess to. Naturally, Gonzo will understand that. Yush, Yuri. Looks like he doesn't understand it. Arigato gozaimasu. But father. Nan no dasan mo naku nanori deta wake dewa arumai. His gaze crashed explosively against that of his son. Even she seemed to be scared right now, as her fingers trembled slightly. Still refusing to accept the idea, I followed Usami out of the room. Hey, Usami. I understand. I didn't want to do it myself. Excuse me. Ah,、uh, and you do. You have no idea what that man has been put through over the past 12 hours. What makes you think a person without who would have stood that kind of torture could, would confess to you? Hi, 自分には無理でしょ Stop kidding around. This isn't a time for jokes. Kanan's up again tomorrow. Mao is bound to pull something. 承知してます。甘い。Right, so. え。もう我が身を捧げる覚悟です。Huh? Usami filled with the phone. I returned to her last night, dialing the number. She wore a grave expression. Gonna call that friend of yours? Is that why you're fearing for your life right now? The call connected. いや、いや、もしもし。Around 30 minutes later, we were in a cafe. After ordering a couple of coffees, we waited for someone at the bar. <laughs> What's with you? You haven't said a thing. <laughs> It's definitely got to be what's her name. An excuse for what? Mm-hmm. What does that matter? Can't you tell her you've, you've been busy? What are you so afraid of? Maybe you should sit down, shut up, watch, observe, and find out that way. You ever think of that, money boy? At that moment, a chime announced the opening of the door. A tall woman waltzed in with a gust of wind. Wearing the same outfit and the same smile as the last time I saw her, Tokika Yuki slowly walked over to where Usami was sitting. Yeah, yeah. Usami stood up su suddenly. Hisashibori, kyuni yobi deste, gomen. She doesn't seem impressed at all. Sa, saikin, nani shite no? どうしてこの町に来たのかな。うさみ never talks like that。どうしてすぐ連絡くれなかったの。そ、それは。忙しい。忙しかった。うん、忙しかったから。なんだな。<笑>なんでちょっと裸の大将入れてくるの。What is Rain Man? So, not what you're a key deal. 
She clapped her hands together and spread her arms out wide. She nodded and took off her coat elegantly, handing it to a waiter. Nice suit. She spoke in a low voice, touching her lips with one finger. What a seductive charm. In stark contrast, Usami emptied her cup in one gulp, sighed in satisfaction, and began to talk with, Toki uh, with Tokita. え、急いでるんだ、ユキ。早くしないと死人が出るかもしれない。死人が出るかもしれない。今この街でフィギュアスケートの大会やってるだろ。やってるわね。一人のコーチが狙われてるんだ。コーチだけじゃなくて大会関
I suppose it's only appropriate. What? The information we need pertains to the criminal pl plan Mawu. Uh, Mawu's the enigmatic, master en enigmatic mastermind behind this whole fiasco. Anyway, we need to know about the plan our captive accomplice was supposed to carry out. Confusion would be the natural response to being suddenly briefed on the recent unholy acts of the devil. However, Tokita's expression held fast. She merely nodded. We can scrounge together things like his name, address, profession, age, and such, but... Tokita suddenly stood up and walked to the cash register. Hey, Misami. Hi. Who is this chick? Is she a professional interrogator or something? Yuki is a person's heart. So what is the Rain Man? Looks more like a comedy routine to me. Yuki was more Azai san no omaka na seika kurai wa tsukanda to omoimasu yo. Don't be ridiculous. Tokita called me to call to me from the register. Azai san wa warikan ga ii no yo ne. Oh, hora. See what? You could pretty much call this our first encounter. This isn't even a business meeting, so there'd be no reason for her to pay my part of the check. <laughs> she flashed the waiter a smile. What a strange woman. But strange or not, if Tokita really can get Saijo to talk, Usami and I will be in the clear. That's the only thing I should be thinking about at this point. We left the coffee shop for Saijo's holding place. A heat that binds the soul permeated my pores. We were in a 20-year-old building that belongs to the Azai Corporation. The first floor is for consumer finance. Well, the second and third contain offices set aside for soil work. The basement is a space that the government doesn't even know exists. The three of us walked down the stairs to a place the sunlight will never reach. I pushed open the heavy doors. The narrow room was wet with dull pools of liquid scattered about. I couldn't tell which were water and which were blood. Saijo was near the wall opposite the entrance. His hands were cuffed behind his back, and he was silently sitting on a stool. How is he? Is he strong enough to speak? I'm sure you don't. Of course not. Oribi seems pretty vigorous himself. The sight of Haribi's cruel smile turns any visions of this room's past few hours into nausea. Tokita was calmly staring at the only light in the room, a naked fluorescent bulb. <laughs> Saijo's sticky voice rang out. He continued mocking her in hatred. Very well. Tokia picked up an overturned stool and inched closer to Saijo. Tokita sat face to face with Saijo. 
It was at a distance where Tokita's legs might reach far enough to kick him. His arms may be bound, but he but she's still close enough to be in danger should he suddenly try to attack her. Is this woman an idiot? What's the point of giving that much away? Saijo will only be even more wary once he knows she's Usami's friend. And as I suspected, Saijo moved his dirty lips in wrath. He glared at Tokita with true anger. <laughs> Tokita smiled calmly. Then she continued on with respectful, strong tone. なに私は別に彼らにお金をもらっているわけではありません。at that, hesitation flashed across Saijo's face. He turned away from Tokita and licked his lips. Something about the expression, those people behind me, bugged me. Earlier she had said brutes. Is there some kind of purpose behind that? As I mulled over such thoughts, Saijo spoke, panicked. Oi. He called out to Tokita, who was about to leave her seat. Taitona, as Tokita spoke, her lips formed a smile. I couldn't help but gulp. Whether Tokita realized it or not, she managed to coax the word Ma'u out of Saijo's mouth. She should be pressing him on that right now. Why? Why waste your time? いけませんでしたかのりゆきだ。それがどうした。いえ、ありがとうございます。私はカタカナで雪なんです。珍しいでしょ。どうして漢字の雪じゃないんでしょうね。She <笑> giggled happily. After that, Tokia went from one useless subject to the next. Residence, job, age, marital status. All obvious things. Still, I don't understand. Why did Tokita nod earnestly every time Saijo gave an answer? Oi, Tokita! She's obviously psychologically manipulating him, but I'm not quite sure I understand what technique she's trying to use here. あなたのことを深く知りたいのです。なぜこんな非人道的な扱いを受けているのか不思議で仕方がない。あなたは質問にまともに答えられるのに、
与えられたのは暴力ばかり、oh,違いますか I think I see now. You're trying to come off as an ally to him. Some of the Torida. So, no, you should return or shit here. What I show Yatra no Nakama or Hitori. Nay, who the kid is I tear thunder. Nay, who the kid is I tear. Then she was Shakai no Kuzda. Nani, you are in Shindahonga Konokuni no Tabede or I go. Again, Tokita nodded deeply. That way, he told Kizuketa to Stemo. Conna to Coroni to Chicomera in a Vaucasi desne. So da. Toda. Does your cacon he told Corosta Tokimo Chanto Hono Sabaki Uketa? Nanoni Coitra to Stem. Oi, Kuzdo, Kitty Luga. At Sajo's provocation, I watched Ribi uneasily. But the sadist just laughed. Do my rigato was I must say. You are to say, Josa no cotona, Vacarica Catechimasta. Now that I think about it, why is Tokia being so polite? The screw head is a cold blooded killer. He strangled his own sister to death. Sirito Mondaiva. Then Chunga do stara, Anato no say to say or mito merino cato you cotto this. Yoroskereba. その辺を一緒に考えていきたいと思うのですが一緒に考えるはいお役に立てればと思います話しても無駄だ連中は頭まで筋肉でできている that, 私は違います真剣に西条さんのお話を聞く用意があります She subtly leaned forward, shortening the distance between the two of them. Saijo didn't speak at all, only licking the edge of his lips again. Mao no koto wa hanasan so. あなたは暴力を受けながらも魔王という人物に義り立てしているなかなかできることではありませんサイジョー lowered his eyes トキラ also turned away her gaze では魔王のことは話さないいいですねああ私は何をされても構わんか仲間を売るような真似はしない結構ですそれではあなたはもしこんな場所にいなければ今後何をなされるおつもりだったんですか so What Saijo does is ultimately a result of Mao's instructions. In truth, the fact that Tokita is also coaxed a sentence, I don't care how badly I'm treated, out of Saijo's mouth is glaring. She was appealing to his pride. Someone tells me that even if you could get your way, it's not. Well, even if you could walk out of here, that's never gonna happen. Motiro, so this year, ne? Ima vadai no figure skate no shiai demo mini karemaska? She's pretty good. With seemingly carefree tone, she led him straight to the crime scene. Figure skate? So da na. So re mo ii kamo shire. This year, ne? ただチケットはなかなか手に入らないと聞きますがそうなのかもしかしてお持ちだったんですかああすごいですね私も一度アザイカノンという選手を生で見たいと思っていたんですアザイカノンかどうも人気選手らしいなだがまあいや
人格に問題がある。Right there. Saiju paused in the middle of his sentence. You probably something swallowed something along the lines of Mao would have more to say. The punk's breaking bit by bit. Speaking of which, how did Saijo, who doesn't know how difficult it is to get tickets, get a ticket? Surely Tokita will hone in on that issue. And then, if she's successful, we can confirm that Mao purchased the tickets. But for what reason does he need Saijo to sneak into the arena? Right here is the moment of truth. <laughs> However, Tokita simply gave Saijo these words and a bright smile. Saijo san, oshokuji wa toraremashita ka? She suddenly turned to her lax subject. Sukoshi, yasumarete wa ikaga desu? Hanashi wa ii no ka? Otsukare no yo desu nade, hitomazu chudan shimasen ka? Watashi wa itsu demo kamaimasen nade. Wakatta. なら酒をくれウイスキーがいいな Does this bastard have no shame? アザイさんお願いできるかしら What are you trying to do, Tokita? Get him drunk would be beneficial here, I'm sure I controlled my urge to yell out and answered calmly No, should be alright Tokita, there are a few things I'd like to speak to you about. Why don't you take a break too, Haribi? That is, if you don't mind relinquishing command to me. In other words, if this interrogation fails, I'll have pissed in Gonzo's face. Now that is a hilarious mental image. Then I'll be back later. Let's stop outside, ladies. We saw me and Tokita and Tao. I left that dark prison. Tao. When I got outside, I felt the brightness of the winter sunlight reflected off the snow. Listen up, Tokita. Nanikashira? She's still keeping up that same calm tone. I don't remember asking you to be Saijo's servant. <laughs> Whiskey? Are you kidding me? What do you want to do next? Pour it for him? <laughs> no doubt she does. That's why I kept quiet through it all. But this is the limit. Tokita nodded. Satisfied. Oh, I'd say you're the biggest source of, of this stress. For God's sake, who saw me alone was bad enough. She really isn't that bad, you know. You think the job's too difficult, you can just walk away. Well, I somehow doubt that. You finally mentioned figure skating, and you backed off immediately thereafter. Why? Tokita shook her head. Stress response? Do you work in criminal psychology by any chance? Well, you can't avoid the question, can you? あのタイミングではダメなの。告白するのにもムードってものがあるでしょ。まず仲良くなって電話番号を聞いて 
おしゃれなレストランを予約してからじゃなきゃ Given what I've just, g i v e n this way, just with how you, I witnessed you work him and some of the jargon you're talking about. If you are a criminal psychologist, then you probably work with the police, right? In that case, then. Interesting. That means that、uh, Sami basically already has a contact in the police. You. If I'm right. Get close. Saijo. Look, I'm starting to get fed up with this woman. What's the point of getting close to a little shit like him? I mean, sure, I'll bet no one's ever taken that punk seriously before, but still. Of course. c a n a l be on the, the ice tomorrow. There's no time to play around. ね、彼のような人間を操るのは簡単なんだけれどね。お友達になってあげればいいんだから。でも、あなた方が理不尽な暴力を振るったものだから、殻にこもっているの。最初は無理かなと思ったのよ。私の方がたくさん喋っていた
When do you want to be back here? So, well, this is a problem. Didn't Mao didn't Mao only express concern over uh, Saiju talking at some point before quote unquote tomorrow? By time if we're talking about the same tomorrow here that you're talking about, then well frankly by then it'll probably already be too late. We don't have that kind of time. This is even worse than Saijo. Talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. If you leave and don't come back until tomorrow afternoon, the guy's gonna hate you, won't he? What am I supposed to do? Ruby left things to me, so if Saijo doesn't confess, I'll have to take responsibility. She used my given name. Compared to her expression while get talking to Saijo, she had a teasing smile on her face. Don't underestimate me, woman. I glared at her. This is my job. <laughs> Alright then. We'll give it a try. Damn it. Completely fall into her trap. What? She's right. Fine. I agreed, though just barely. Can you give me your contact info? I see you sneaking off there, Usami. Tokia happily agreed, and we exchanged phone numbers. Usami seemed to have disappeared. Hmm, I see that expression you're wearing. Something tells me that uh, Usami is going to be in for a bit of a spanking session, am I right? Just what kind of relationship do these two share? Well, a complicated one, undoubtedly. Kanan came home while I was working. <sighs> Hello again. The night was no longer young, and snowflakes were furiously dancing outside my monstrous windows. <laughs> Well, it is winter, so I don't know what you're expecting. Don't clomp on me so tightly. She tugged on my sleeve firmly. How many times have I told you this, huh? Don't act so spoiled. What, are you nervous? So, nervous then. I'm pretty sure nervous is the word for that, Kanon. The little, de the, the, the little devil guy whispering behind my shoulder is probably uh, saying, yes, you are right to, uh, agree, to agree with that. 
But with that feeling, I mean. Whatever. I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. <sighs> what do you want me to do? Simple request. Okay, Kiyosuke. Hug. Stop this. I'm serious. After taking off her coat and washing up, Kanan suddenly became polite. Hmm? What? I have a bad feeling about this. Kanan is trying to be considerate to me. Hesitance crept up on me the more I racked my brain, wondering what this could be about. You are too. Despite sounding like a joke, her gaze was very serious. What will it be? Is this something I'm going to regret hearing? Hmm. What the hell's going on here? Suddenly, as I possessed by a demon, I remembered the sensation last night when Kanan held me. I remembered the emotions. I remembered her sweet scent and her warmth. Wait. This isn't about... You know, that... Is it? I swallowed. My expression must be very stiff right now. She shook her head in a lonely way. I see. I'm lost. Of course you are. I'm just sitting here, frowning, chewing my lip. I can't lie. I'm curious. I, I want to hear her out. But I feel like if I do, I'll never be able to turn back. I need to make this decision carefully. Okay, I'm going to take that as a warning that, uh, depending on what I choose here, I will be locked on to something, to some other route, right? You, you have legitimate romantic feelings towards this dipshit, don't you? That's what you want to talk about, am I right? And if I were to select, I should listen to her. You're going to talk about just that subject, and well, God knows where the things are going to end up five minutes from there. Hmm. You know what? As a matter of fact, I happen to have a coin available right here. I'm gonna make. I'm going to uh, play a little game. If it lands on heads, I will listen to you. Tails, I will avoid the subject. Heads, it is. But is this really okay? Depends on who you're asking. I couldn't help but second guess myself. Kanan's expression told me that this conversation would be no joke. She desperately wants to convey her feelings to me. And besides, Kanan doesn't lie. I think she does. If she said it's important, then it is. Still, should I really listen to her heart? I've already flipped heads, so it's what I need to do. Alright. I won't hesitate any longer. Talk to me, Kanan. Gazing at her, 
I leave these few short words. Yes? Protect you. Partner? Come on, dumbass. Think. What do you think she means? I suppose we're not talking about figure skating here. Yes, you're on the right track. Can't say I do. I shake my head. You know, Kanan, she interrupted me, possibly fearing an outright refusal. Honestly, I'm astonished that you do have an interest in things like that. I sighed deeply as my sight fell down to the floor. In her heart, Kanan must be incredibly anxious, despite her leisurely attitude. Each one of my words must feel heavy to her. Well, I can't really take the moral high ground anymore by saying we're just brother and sister. I suppose you can't, huh? <laughs> but you know, I can't just up and see you in that light. Such optimism only showcases her anxiety. On the contrary, let me ask you a question. Why do you like me? Have you not been paying attention to anything that she's been saying to you throughout this whole chapter? Answer me seriously. Focusing on skating for so long has stunted her ability to do other things. Like uphold sincere heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Yeah, well that's kind of your fault. I mean, you just kind of barged in here one day and I'm and I couldn't say no to shooting you away so I'm on your side I think your definition of kind and gentle and my definition of kind and gentle are a little bit different at least in regards to Kiyosuke's uh, general demeanor towards towards you there are more reliable people out there than you could ever want Kanon Take Hikiko san for. Kanan interrupted me a second time. Yeah. Are you sure you aren't just lonely? Her words fell like droplets. She turned away from me, muttering. Huh? I was hung up on something. I remembered something as I stared at her childish profile. Hey, back when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's nothing. I was just thinking about how long we've known each other. When did we first meet? So, shortly after I was taken in by Gonzo, then? Starved to death. Right. It sure was a long time ago. The bath and toilet were in the same room. The walls were paper thin. There was barely enough room to move around in. It was pretty much the definition of janky. Gonzo bought it for me, as a place to stay until I found a way to make a living. The Joker told me he'd buy me anything I needed, but I was way too scared to ask for anything big. As I look back, I can laugh at the situation. I mean, it's pretty funny if you think about it. Cockroaches all over the place. Foreigners next door sang karaoke every freaking night. 
Oh, you poor baby. Ugh, I almost forgot the bathtub. It was so filthy it felt more like I was washing it than vice versa. The place was god awful. Pity Falls? <laughs> what a name! <laughs> No, you gave it that name. I couldn't help but laugh. Well, based on what your description of the place, it might as well be called Pity. Because I sure as hell pity you right now. <laughs> Tell me about it. He's mean even now. You... Really? Mm. No. What happened? <laughs> There's no such thing as free lunch, you know. I had heard that you were Gonzo's daughter. I figured it'd be bad to owe you of all people a favor. As we found ourselves drifting into tales of the past, the tension in the room around us began to melt. You were already skating by that time, right? Mm. Yes, you did. TV news teams came to my home to talk to me. I have no idea how much that annoyed me. People called me the brother of the genius skating girl. I just wanted to crawl under some rock and die. Maybe it may have been a command of Gonzo's that kept Kanan's complicated family situation largely unknown to the outside world. Unfortunately, I think you're right, at least during his lifetime. Shut up. I smiled bitterly. He really isn't. You have poor taste. And honestly, a bit of a questionable moral compass, considering the taste in question. What? She wore a blissful, radiant smile. If you can call that moral slime known as Aichi a friend, I guess that's one. And then there's Subaki, and then there is, um, Kiyosuke's the most favorite person in the whole planet, Usami. Of all the... I don't know. I mean, have you really spoken and hung around Subaki and Usami long enough while I'm in the same room? Kanon's gentle fl voice flows into my ears. Well, to be fair, I guess it's still possible that Usami isn't being honest with uh, her, some of her remarks, but still. Her breath tickles and massages me, and my strengthless knees cause my feet to stagger. Hmm. <laughs> well, it is cold in here. Is it cold in here to you? <laughs> Come on, it's freezing in here. Wait, I'm feeling dizzy. My heart's racing. Uh, it could be just plain old anxiety, you know, and just, you know, your body reacting to being cold. It's the flu, you idiot. Or it's the flu. She put her palm to my forehead nervously. Please don't scare me like that. Well, I can't help that there's a devil man in, on my shoulder that likes to hijack my brain at the most inconvenient times. Well, it is true that I didn't notice it until I relaxed. Hey, Kanan. Honestly, I think chicken noodle soup would probably work better here. No, wait. I'm so damn cold. C can you sleep by yourself? I gave you the key to the room, right? Mm. I'm going out. Bye. Ch -ch 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 
She almost fell over when she grabbed my arm. She looked like a comedian. If you catch my sickness, all of Japan will hate me. Hotel or something. No, hotels are too expensive. Yeichi's palace is a possibility for the night, I suppose. Maybe you can get that little prick the flu. He's an idiot, though, so he probably won't catch it. You have to... Well, I don't know, man. I have yet to meet an idiot in myself here who's so stupid here that they're immune to common diseases like the flu. <clears throat> my vision suddenly went black. And I was coated in the sensation that my body was floating in air. I opened my eyes. Kanan is gazing at me with an air of uneasiness. Chicken noodle soup! The sound of Kanan stomping about on the floor fills my ears. Heavy steps echo into my skull. Just get me a blanket! My mind was swallowed by darkness after hearing these words. Yep, I'm definitely on Kanon's route now, I guess. All because of a little coin flip. Funny how luck will take you in the, in some of the most awkward directions at times. My parched throat ached. The smell of sweat assaulted me. My back felt the, the soft caress of my bed. My eyes opened to a familiar ceiling. I knock into something as I reach out my hand for water. The texture of Kanan's hair greeted my hand as it fumbled around. You know that if you catch the flu, Japan is going to hate this bastard, right? Not that I really care all that much personally, but... It would be kind of make a lot doing a lot of basic tasks, let alone my uh, devil hunt, very difficult, you know. Kanan had been sleeping seated on the floor, laying her head and arms on the bed beside me. I suddenly understood the situation. I'm so sorry. I leaped out of bed and checked the time. You have to be at the short program today, right? Even so, Kanan only made a lazy, absent-minded sound. Are you going to be late? It'll work out. But it's the Grand Prix Finals. Tons of really important people will be there, won't they? I'm sure they'd have their hands full trying to lecture someone that arrogant anyway. She had gone out and, and bought me a water bottle and some aspirin. Warmth from a hot water bag, which I don't which I know I didn't have here yesterday, seeps into my feet. The cold, wet towel on my forehead tells me a Kanan took care of me through the whole night. Oh man, you're gonna be exhausted for your thing. Alright, I'll drive you there. Ah, yeah. Fine, just get ready. I said I'm fine. Shut your mouth and hurry it up. In truth, though, I should be the one to thank her. I got out of the car and accompanied her the rest of the way. Kanon raised her arm in a lively manner despite staying up all night. Ikiko san was shouting to Kanon from the competitor's entrance. She rushed over to Kanon. Kanon-chan, 
今から行くよ一体どうしたっていうのカノンちゃん何があったの I happened, madam. I'm very, very sorry, Kiko san. Truth is, cannot interrupt it me. Nanda te i de so? Elai hito ni aisat to ka mendok saka ta da ke da yo. Dinko no soto de heko heko suru nante. Watashi no shikoto ja nai yo. Kiko san smiled wide. Ka non chan, go me na sai. So na ni iya da ta? もういいよ。行こう。Hey, k a n o n n o n ちゃんは嘘はついてない。k a n o n answered gravely. Indeed, it wasn't a lie. But that wasn't the problem. k a n o n and Ikuko san vanished into the arena before I had time to explain. Shit. I just got k a n o n into so much trouble. I considered my options before being swallowed by waves of repentance. There it is. Repentance. A normal human emotion. I'm so proud of you, Kiyosuke. At some point in the afternoon, I received word from Haribi while waiting for Tokita. That's not a good way to open a conversation. 今日の朝方。ホーリビスリポートは、ボイルドマイブロード。サイジョーズ・バーブリンプッシュ・ゴー We finally captured Mao's accomplice. But with this, we've lost our only lead. Kanon, she'll be. Then take that official apology bullshit and shut up your ass where it belongs! I can't help but get angry as Kanon's face crosses my mind. Sorry. Look. Let's just focus on what to do from here on out. Sorry for lashing out at you. Anyway, I'll contact you again soon. I need to tell Sami and Tokita about the sudden shift in scenario. To think that a simple coin flip has essentially indirectly killed a man. Although, considering the man in question, I think, I, I think this coin flip of mine might have done humanity at large a huge favor. So, I'm not complaining! The zombie finally arrived at the rendezvous point, except I'm gonna complain now because, well, we lost our lead. Yuki wa konai so desu. Mo o yaku ni tateru koto wa nai desho to itte imashita. And what is her reason? It's alright. Oh, wait. It's probably because she's aware of what just happened, right? It's alright. I feel bad for Tokita. What we do know is that Mao has his eyes set on Niki Kuko san. I'll have men sent to protect her at the arena. <sighs> Sami shook her head uncertainly. I know. The arena already has a sanctioned security force. If we, just, if we try to take matters into our own hands, the two groups might just get in each other's ways. Alright. Mao wants to see Kanon fail, right? If so, then he may use force. We can't eliminate the possibility, can we? Yes. I c a n Alright, do it. Contact me immediately if you find anything. Usami nodded lightly and vanished into the crowd. I rushed to the arena. Even though the sun still hadn't set, a profuse number of people had gathered in the seating area of the, of the arena. I used my position as Kanon's brother to make my way into the special staff only passage. 
I needed to call Ikuko-san out of her meeting. Come to think of it, Ikuko-san isn't Kanan's official coach. That would normally just make her a standard guest, but perhaps she's being allowed as in as staff due to her role in supporting Kanan up until now. Who knows? Maybe she's even used some sort of connection with the tournament directors. Kyosuke-kun? Doshitano? Lots of things, actually. Something to worry about. Are you busy at the moment? <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that. First thing out of her mouth is a complaint? So, uh, anything strange going on? Yeah. Has anything around you seemed off somehow recently? Well, besides the guys telling you all the time. I didn't want to start a discussion about the Yakuza escort arranged by Gonzo. That man means Gonzo. Yeah, I didn't need you to tell me that. I figured as much. A jeer leaked out. Her face relaxed, but the harshness lingered for a moment in her eyes. As if to plead, you make sure to give him an earful for me too, Kyosuke kun. I would, but unfortunately, that would result in my death, I'm sure. I don't know. I'm not very clear on the matter. Although, if I'm feeling particularly suicidal, I will be sure to give it a shot. And find some way to make sure that you hear the results of the encounter after the fact. One would usually jump to this conclusion. Oh, no, definitely not. If I make one little mistake with my word choice, she may ad advertise the problem to everyone around her. Kanan will be crushed if Ikiko san is killed. Anyone could tell that could tell this Anyone could tell this mother and daughter aren't getting along well, but she's still her mother. Who knows? This is bad. I probably should have just let sleeping dogs lie. Well, I'm sure it's nothing. I wouldn't worry about it. So? A man approached us as we talked. A man with a camera on his shoulder. That camera is actually a gun! An armband bearing the message camera allowed swung loosely from his jacket sleeve. Hello, Kanesaki Ikuko coach. He's probably a reporter from a magazine. The man bowed his head and shot Ikiko san a flattering glance. I have a feeling that this guy is gonna be the assassin. She put on a steady smile, as if changing to another person. The man told her his name in the magazine he worked for. It was hardly a publisher worth noting. There's the proof! He's from a pub publisher it's hardly worth noting! They're known for publishing racy books about celebrity scandals in Yakuza. Excuse me. Akiko san gracefully shook her head. The reporter smiled with glaring teeth. Kiko-san's attitude was resolute, but she couldn't hide the nervous smile pulling at the corners of her mouth. I better leave this place. I just can't bring myself to like this woman. 
If I'm right about this guy, then doing so would mean very unfortunate news to bring to the daughter later. Time flows on, and the arena is still. A number of skilled foreign skaters come out on uh, came out on the ice and were bathed in applause. APM rolled around. The last group of competitors took to the ice for a warm-up. The arena thundered loudly with applause as they skated into the rink. It seemed the audience went crazy every time Kanan struck a, stuck a dynamic jump. I was on edge. Mao's trap aside, I was worried about Kanan's health. She hardly slept due to taking care of me. Can she perform up to snuff when not at the top of her game? Obviously not. As I pondered this, I took a call from Usami. This seems good enough. If I didn't know better, I'd say everything's going smoothly. <sighs> Where are you, by the way? I see. That confirms he had something planned for today. Saijo had the arena ticket, right? Yes, it's true. the Sure enough, something's going down here today. The call ended before she was able to finish her sentence. Oh, what convenient timing. My cell phone lost its signal. I'd have to step outside to call her back, but all the entrances were congested by the monstrous crowd. Look fine to me. Nothing I can do, I guess. Time simply passed by, and the growing sense of impatience within me seemed too crushing to endure. The situation turned out for the best, contrary to my earlier expectations. Nothing had come to pass. You sure? If I had to report something, it'd be that Kanan dished out another fantastic score. I almost collapsed from relief upon seeing Kanan standing briefly Safely, excuse me, at the arena's entrance. You'd have thought that my fever came back with a vengeance or something. No harm had come to Akiko san either. Well, look at that. Fresh egg on my face. At least I'm getting extra protein. There was no problem at all. Hello. Would you like some egg? I drove Kanan back to my apartment. Welcome home. Welcome back together. We came back together, if you hadn't noticed. How the hell did I get welcome back together? Kanan looks silly now compared to her bewitching aura on the ice. Thanks to you. But don't use it as an excuse to get all cocky on me, you hear? My fear wasn't that bad. How much? I gave Kanan that glare she thought would kill her all those years ago. No, seriously. How much did you shell out for the aspirin in the hot water bag? Just give me the receipt. The receipt. We'll be squared away in no time. What? You idiot! Listen, you need to start holding on to your receipts. Besides being good practice, it'd probably make you realize just how much money you've been wasting. I took out 10,000 yen from my wallet as I clicked my tongue. Here. Well, I did, at least, when you sh before you took care of it, for the most part. 
I did last night. Take it. I know. They probably won't find a cure while I'm alive. She pulled the money out from between my fingers, grumbling all the while. I'm sorry. I really am. Well, I was just worried that your short program might suffer because of me. Get to sleep early today. I reclined on my sofa and turned on the TV. Upon switching to the sports news, I saw Kanan smile behind a microphone. The famous athlete on the screen used a totally different tone from my sister. Narcissist. Kanan watched the interview with me and com commented on her television self. Judging by the video alone, Kanan seemed like a mature adult woman. After Kanan, Se uh, Se um, Seta Makiko came up to speak. Her petite, charming frame suited to televised interviews nicely. She sounded like a voice actress in an anime. She was a small girl and seemed to be quite likable. Hey, Kanan. What do you think about her saying that? Kanan's eyes widened. You better not say that in front of other people. Though Kanan doesn't mean anything by it, people would think she's ridiculing the girl. That's even worse. You don't even follow the other skaters, do you? Pretty good for you. Good God, it won't stop. I watched people cry when you got a 70.3. Why is she so laid back? Well, she. Well, it could be because she's sleep deprived. However, when the replay of her program started running, Kanan's eyes changed. <sighs> She's glaring with hatred at another self. You know, self-hatred is not exactly a good thing to engage in. Despite having such a high score, she's, st she's still not content. She kept her voice low. I... I'm so sorry. Really, I swear. Alright. She's kind of scary. Eh. About as scary as, an, as a ladybug, perhaps. I turned off the TV, pretending that I hadn't noticed. About? About what? Yeah, and? I really don't understand what you're getting at. Did you mess up? You better listen to what Mr. Hilton says. Ikiko-san isn't your coach. There seems to be discord between Ikiko san and Mr. Hilton. She looked at me seriously. What? Like what? Is this the follow up of yesterday? 
I want to be your partner. I have a feeling I know where this is going. Kanan spoke with a little bit of irritation and a little bit of sadness. I don't know how to answer. What's my face look like right now, I wonder? Well, I bet it's not as charming and suave as Devil Man's. At the very least, I doubt I looked relaxed. Danger. I turned the question back with a reluctant smile. I'm not really sure what you're getting at. What's wrong? <sighs> Maybe I should go to bed early tonight, too. That damn woman. It must have been some horrible gag. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. Yeah, that's probably it. Why? She shouldn't disturb her daughter, even if it was even if it even if it were really only a joke. I knew she was self-centered, but to think she'd go that far. Alright, let's take a bath. Today is special, so I'll wash your hair for you. However, Kanan's face was still full of suspicion. Papa no no comment. Huh. Is that what's got you thinking your mom's life is in danger? Okay, yeah, I imagine him with a gun in of itself could be as scary, but... Just for my curiosity's sake, what was the context behind him holding a gun? But why would that mean Akiko-san's in danger? Well, if he's won't show me anything, Devil Man's certainly not an idiot. So? Those jobs are for the police. Is Papa a policeman? Well, he was one. Mm, that was way too close for comfort. A chill ran through me when she said threat letter. Don't think too much. Just prepare yourself for excuse me. Just prepare yourself for tomorrow and everything will be fine. Her face simply didn't seem willing to accept it. I didn't fail to spot the deep sadness in her eyes. Kanan's face suddenly took on a ghostly pallor. Pallor. It was a face of anger, a face of despair. A face that overwhelmed me entirely. The girl before me is a girl who lives for skating. Kanan always corners herself into that role, it seems. And when she does, I become a prisoner, the prisoner of that unstable region of her heart. I want to be your partner. Kanan. Right back at you. Don't look at me like that. Her voice lays the blame with me. I look at Kanan, shocked. A doubt flows over my mind. Yet I speak without hesitation. So the truth is, you don't like skating. Kanan's eyes are filled with hatred. She 
She stares at me without any movement whatsoever. She lays her words on me syllable by syllable, trying desperately to suppress her pain. She continued in a soft-hearted whisper. Although her ride to the Valkyries may not have been plain, Kanan was no longer in my room, but upon the ice. She's my sister, she's only my sister in name. This moment has forced me to take a good-hearted look at the girl I've ignored until now. I felt that she was pitiful. Me, of all people, feeling pity. And the chronic headache which had plagued me for so long left, as if it had never even been there. Hmm. Well, I can't say I'm exactly surprised to see that she really does have a lot going going through her head under the surface, but still. I do feel some sympathy for her. Con considering all the all the shit that she's going through. Anywho. I think now is as good a spot as any to leave things for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of The Devil on G-String. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>